Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Dr. Stephen Walker. So I just want to say after this week and you know these three days we've had together, do I have the best job on the planet or what? <laughs> this, this is a fantastic organization and you're a fantastic community of folks. So in my open re opening remarks uh, two days ago, I said that D60 was about setting a course for our future, our country's future, together. Over these last three days, you've embraced that charge through intense dialogue on new technologies and their potential to solve our country's toughest challenges. It seems apparent to me that this community knows exactly where it needs to go and what it needs to do to accomplish uh, what it needs to accomplish next in support of developing breakthrough technologies and capabilities for our national security. At last night's dinner, I talked about the fact that the DARPA community is much bigger than just the current folks in the building. It's, our, it's also our warfighter customer, our congressional and Pentagon leadership, our alumni, our performer base, and our families. All of these different parts have to work together well for DARPA to be successful. Over the last 60 years, these different parts of DARPA have worked pretty well to produce such radical warfighting innovation as stealth aircraft, unmanned systems, precision guided munitions. And of course, this community produced technologies that have forever changed our world, such as, such as advanced microelectronics, material science, artificial intelligence, and more generally, information technologies that led to a little thing we call the internet. My boss, Mike Griffin, just talked about DARPA. And uh, he didn't talk too much about his tech priorities, but he's talked, talked about them in other forums. Uh, one that rises to the top of his list is hypersonics, um, and another one is artificial intelligence. Those of you who know me will not be surprised that I certainly believe hypersonics is a game changer <laughs> and a critical capability we must have. But you might be surprised that for me, artificial intelligence competes with hypersonics as probably my number one priority at DARPA. In reality, over about the last 50 years, DARPA and its research partners have led the way in establishing the field of artificial intelligence. We're not new to this game. Together, we have taken AI from a bold notion with almost no technological underpinnings in today's per, uh, into today's, turned it into today's pervasive capabilities that affect our everyday lives. Continuous DARPA support for AI research created rule-based expert systems technologies followed by the statistical learning technologies that we see today. We refer to these technologies generally as the first and second waves of AI. And I'm proud to tell you that DARPA plans to continue and to increase its support for AI research with a significant focus on the technologies that underpin a third wave of AI, technologies focused on contextual reasoning. In 2018, approximately 80 of DARPA's 250 programs involve some form of AI. And 25 of those programs actually create new foundational AI technologies. Moving forward, DARPA's AI investments will have three foci couched under a new initiative we're calling AI Next. First, DARPA will continue to explore and create new AI technologies but with a primary focus on this third wave contextual reasoning artificial intelligence. Second, DARPA will identify and apply current and emerging AI technologies to solve today's toughest security challenges. Third, DARPA will create the deep analysis and understanding of how and why today's AI technologies work in part to allow the robust performance guarantees essential for military and safety critical systems. We will increase 
our outreach efforts related to AI, AI to understand your advances, your ideas, and frankly, your concerns. This means more visiting with performers, with our performer community, as well as a colloquium we hope to hold in the March 2019 timeframe. Your insights and guidance will be essential to the success of AI Next. DARPA has already launched into this initiative. We've launched a quick turn research funding mechanism we call AI Exploration. It's on our website. And this, uh, this AI Exploration Broad Agency announcement will support deep dives into this potential third wave of AI. AI Exploration Awards will launch significant numbers of high risk, high payoff lines of scientific exploration. New topic areas will be published on a regular basis. One of the first topics we published is physics in AI. It attracted many good ideas. Uh, we've whittled those down, and early awards in the physics of AI will be made uh, hopefully early this fall. The idea is to turn these things in 90 days or less. We fully recognize that much AI work is being supported by companies. We will build on and leverage that work. DARPA will attack, as it always does, though, those hard technical problems that must be addressed for our nation's security. Technical problems that carry too much risk or offer too little financial return for industry in the short term. DARPA's current five-year, almost $2 billion AI Next plan will continue DARPA's role in defining and building AI technologies for the future. We'll rely on you, our research partners, to help make that happen. And I'd just like to call out uh, my deputy, Peter Heinem, who has really led this uh, effort at DARPA for me. It's a cross-office effort, uh, and, and Peter should be given the credit. As I leave you today, I think it's important to remember the men and women who came before us, who served in the various parts of this DARPA community, and to remember them with gratitude. They did their very best to keep this community strong and vibrant for our nation these last 60 years so that America could be secure and thereby help the world be secure. We owe a lot to them. Let's not let their efforts be in vain, but instead double down and commit to working together to ensure our country continues to create technological surprise for many more years and continues to use that surprise for a better and more secure world. Thank you. So two more things I need to do while, I'm, while I have the podium. Uh, hopefully some of you out there have been extremely inspired by what you've seen these last three days, and inspired not only by what you've seen in terms of our projects, but inspired by the organization, how it works. If you're in a position to be a DARPA program manager, I'd love to talk to you. <laughs> um, come talk to me or any of our office technical directors at any point. Uh, we're always looking for good talent. As Mike said, you'd be joining the best. And so keep that in mind if you're in a position to do that. Second, I want to thank the very small team that I had, that Peter and I had, uh, to put on this event and, uh, and just um, do that right now. Uh, this is really, to pull something like this off with a small agency of 200 government folks, uh, it takes everybody. So you've, you've seen everybody here at DARPA uh, this week. And it's, all, it's been all hands on deck. Um, I want to thank, though, the very small staff Peter and I work with every day. So I'd like to call them to the stage. And please join me in thanking them. Jonathan Bennett, Alexis Morgan, Margaret Rowland, Meredith Hanbury, Elizabeth Bellew, Stacy Higgins, and Ivan Amato. Please come up here. Thanks. Um, really appreciate it, guys. These, 
these, these folks, these folks were the tip of the spear, but as I said, it, it took all of DARPA to do this, um, but they worked tirelessly for at least a year <laughs> to do this, and I think it went off without a hitch, so thank you very much. And thank you to all of you who came and celebrated our, our 60th birthday with us. Um, I, I'm extremely energized by what I saw this week. I'm extremely tired as well. But uh, I, I'm just overjoyed with uh, this, this job, this organization, and this community of people getting the job done for our country. So thank you. Thank you.